Hey everyone, so it's been a very busy holiday season. Uh, we started off the Sukkot holiday with the news that Yehia Sinwar had been uh, eliminated by the IDF, the head of Hamas, the orchestrator, the mastermind behind the October 7th attacks had been eliminated. And I always like to hear the insights from Mossab Hassan Yosef because he has, he's, his father was somebody that was involved, one of the co-founders of Hamas. So he has extra insight, I believe, into what the situation is like, what, what really needs to be done. Uh, he, has, he has some interesting, obviously, insight that, that a lot of others don't have. So check out this clip with him and Chris Cuomo uh, having a discussion and saying what needs to be done next, even though we... We perhaps are at a turning point in the war and the conflict in the situation over there. What needs to be done next? I think he'll elaborate for us with Chris Cuomo. Check this out. The man who orchestrated and executed October 7 genocide is gone. But this is not the end of the uh, war. And uh, my eyes are on uh, Tehran, the head of the snake. As long as Ayatollah, the one who sent thousands of Iranian children to sweep minefields as a strategy, the same one who has sacrificed Gaza, Lebanon, Yemen, and he's willing to sacrifice the entire world for his political ambition, as long as he's still alive, we are going to have a problem in the Middle East. Today is not a day to celebrate. And I saw the... Uh, uh, presidential nominee Kamala saying uh, regarding that this is over. It's not over. She's trying to win the votes and we are trying to win the war. It's the responsibility of every free person in the world to put an end for this Islamic Republic that has been funding Hamas, Hezbollah, Houthis by the American taxpayer money. It's insanity. Everybody is escaping their responsibility. And now we don't have Sinwar in Gaza. Most of Hamas is destroyed. So why don't we pressure the Egyptian army to go into Rafah? If Israel cannot go into Rafah without huge civilian casualty, why don't we send the Egyptian army? We have been funding the Egyptian army $1.5 billion annually. Why cannot we pressure them to tell them, go get the job done and bring the hostages back? Because I am certain that the Gazans will not kill the Egyptian soldiers if they go into Rafah today to locate the hostages and bring them back to their families. Is that because Israel doesn't want Egyptian interference and control of an area that they have to make sure is clear for their own safety? This is an exceptional situation. If Egypt has the intention with coordination with Israel, the United States, and the rest of the world to go on a one mission to bring the hostages back and remove Hamas fleeing forces from power and give the people their freedom back. Then there is no problem. I don't think Israel would oppose that if it's actually coordinated with Israel. What do you think about the ability of Hamas to, whether it's Ishmael uh, or any of the other ones or just one of the other proxy groups to just step up and fill the space as we saw after uh, America took out Osama bin Laden. Is that your concern that this is uh, more of a worm than a snake and when you cut off one, one piece of it, it just grows in the other direction? Look, Hamas, you can consider Hamas over. They have fleeing forces and they can cause lots of trouble. Mm. Now, Anybody who's going to replace Sinwar is going to die. Actually, Khalid Mash'al is a dead man walking. All Hamas leaders in Turkey, in Qatar, in Tehran, in Beirut, wherever they are, they are dead men walking. I said this from the beginning of the war. On October 7, they crossed all the red lines. What they did is unforgivable, is unforgettable. So it doesn't matter who's going to come in office. All of them are wanted. All of them are on the Mossad hits list. And let me take it even farther. Ayatollah is on the Mossad's hit list and the rest of the Iranian uh, guards. 
for the next weeks, for the next months, could be for the next years, we are going to witness the elimination of everybody who orchestrated, funded, planned October 7. We cannot afford legitimizing such savages who killed people indiscriminately, who kidnapped infants, who kidnapped Holocaust survivors. Today is a good day. Today is a great day that we eliminated Sinwar. We have waited for so long, and you could see him, and you could see his nature. He's a coward. He's a coward. He was defeated. He was humiliated, and he had a very ugly death. But this is not the end of the story. We have lots of work to do, and I personally will not rest until I see the Ayatollah, mm. Hezbollah, Houthis, all Iranian proxies defeated and removed from power. Hey, thanks. Yeah, well, first of all, I, I really appreciate his, his strong passion that he always speaks with. You know, he, he, was, he was born into the, the family that the, his father, again, was, uh, was a co-founder of Hamas, so he does have that particular insight. And then he later converted to Christianity and has a very different viewpoint of the world. And I, I think that he... Uh, makes a correct statement in the sense that you can't just put out half of a fire. You can't uh, simply say, okay, we're going to get rid of Hamas and leave Hezbollah and uh, all of these other groups. He says that he will not rest until all evil terrorist groups are, are dismantled, destroyed. And because they're each pledging the same thing. They want to destroy Israel, but not only Israel, they want to destroy the West. They want to destroy Western civilization. Everyone else thinks, oh, this is an Israel problem. This is a Jewish problem. This is not. This is a Western world, a civilized world problem that Israel happens to be carrying out on the rest of our behalf. And so rather than... Uh, criticizing and confronting and, and whatnot, let them do their thing, and the, the world is going to be a better place because of it. Let me hear what you think. Love to hear uh, your thoughts on the matter. If you agree, if you disagree, uh, that's that's fine. Just uh, put it in the comments below. Again, would love to hear. If you enjoy this content overall, please consider subscribing in the uh, with the subscribe button over there. All right? Have a, have a good day, everybody, and uh, we'll talk again soon.